I'm going to introduce our speaker, um, Dan Corbin. Um, he has strong skills and experience in product management. Dan is a principal product manager at HEB. I love HEB. Um, he's an instructor of product management at General Assembly, which is a educational uh, organization um, similar to what we've heard today from other organizations. He's a certified Scrum professional with almost 20 years of product development experience. He's gonna tell you all about that. Um, and he's also the co-organizer of the Product League and the Product Job Club, as well as an instructor at Agile Austin U. Um, please welcome Dan. Please provide Dan a warm welcome. We're going to be talking today about 50 ways to get a job. Uh, it's it's the title of a book that I'm a big uh, believer in, uh, I, one that I've been using, and I truly believe that it's a better way to network, find the right job, and really accelerate your career. And that belief is based in seeing, in seeing the work in action and seeing the results that happen when you follow the guidance from the book. So I'm going to be taking, it's going to seem like I'm taking credit. Devajula wrote the book. And, and, you know, he, he just did such a great job of putting together a framework for how to do your, uh, your job search um, that I just wanted to make sure that everyone's aware of it and that they take advantage of it as well. So as James mentioned, uh, there's me, my little mug there. I work at HEB. I'm a product coach, product management instructor. Uh, I uh, have founded something called the Product League. It is a product meetup group that, um, you know, we're trying to elevate the level of product management in Austin. And since the pandemic, you know, we've actually, we typically will have our meetings, people from like two, three, some, one time we even have four different continents uh, represented. So it's over 2,200 product people now. Highly recommend you join. I'm also the founder of a thing called the Product Job Club, which we're going to talk a little bit about because it's very germane to this uh, topic. Uh, and I, this is my uh, LinkedIn link. Please do connect with me. I really would love to keep in touch. Here's what we'll cover. We don't need to go over this, so we're gonna dive right in. I wanna give you a little bit of background information first. As a uh, former member, I actually, I mean, we're, I mean, I feel like I'm a lifelong member of Launchpad Job Club. I remember going through that initial new member sign up, or, you know, we had to get up there. Back in the day, way back in the day, when we used to meet in person, you would have to get up and go in front. And at the time, I had a paralyzing fear of public speaking. Scared the shit out of me. And uh, But I remember going up, I'm like, I got to do this. Like, I, I got to get a job. It was during the Great Recession uh, when basically everything, everyone got laid off in 2008. And uh, um, so... You know, I've, I've gone through a couple of times where I've been looking for jobs. I know that it, it sucks. It's not fun. Uh, and, you know, it's hard because you're out there putting yourself, making yourself vulnerable and you're just, you feel like you're being judged. And if you don't get the job, does that re reflect on you as a person? The answer is no, it just means you weren't the right fit and there's a better job out there for you. So, but, you know, to know, I just want you to know that I know it's an emotional roller coaster. So there's lots of highs, lots of lows. Lots of great anxiety, uh, lots of great expectations. Sometimes it's thrilling and other time you end up vomiting on yourself. So I don't know where I went with that analogy. Sorry, I will try to like not be so gross going forward. So um, 
I decided, so, you know, as I mentioned, I teach product management at General Assembly, and I saw a lot of my students who I knew were going to make great product managers, they weren't getting jobs. And I, I had a hypothesis, which any good product manager does. So I decided to experiment with it. I had a hypothesis that people were starting at the job boards and doing spray and pray instead of really focusing in on the jobs that fit best for them and doing the, the necessary legwork to get the opportunity to get the foot in the door to prove that they're the right person. So I decided to create the Product Job Club based off of Launchpad Job Club because I absolutely love everything that Shannon and Kathy and James are doing and everyone. Uh, so we, we created like a mini version of it. And, uh, you know, what happened was I chose the 50 ways to get a job uh, book as a framework. Because it really, you know, what I like about it, and you'll see momentarily, is that sort of going to the job boards is like one of the very, very last steps. There's a lot of work that you need to do up until that point. So we started using this book, and the results were pretty, pretty good. Uh, we found out the framework works. Within three months, seven of the eight original members either landed new jobs uh, or had a new job offer or given a, a promotion. Three years later, the job club is still going strong. I meet every other week on Mondays with my group. We have another group that meets on Wednesdays. Lauren is in my Monday group. Uh, Lauren, do you want to come off mute? Give us a, a like a 30 second testimonial of uh, your thoughts on product job club. Sure. It's, um, it's, it's really uplifting. It's great to uh, be in a group of people who are sort of in the same boat. And to see that, um, you know, it's so easy to like, think you suck and everyone else is kick ass. And, yeah. you know, it's, um, you know, it's, it's a, usually comparison is a thief of joy, but uh, this context, it's great because you can see that all these people are, you know, they're going to make it mm -hmm. and you get the same feedback. I'm getting the same feedback from them that uh, I'm giving them. And I just, I think it's wonderful. And also Dan is incredibly generous with this time. And, you know, he's going to have gold stars. That's well, really all I wanted, Lauren. I was waiting. You waited a little too long to compliment me, but I appreciate that you got to it. No, so. In all sincerity. Yeah. Well, it is a great group. I, I obviously, I, I, you know, it's something that I, I, I'm passionate about. I love doing it. It's, and it's so great because I can help people. So like I've seen Lauren's resume. We've gone over it together. I know he brings a lot to the table and that he's going to find a great job. But, you know, when you don't have that maybe outside perspective, it can be, you know, you're just riding that uh, roller coaster alone and it's not fun. So over the years, we've helped 70, over 70 different people get jobs. And a lot of them, it's the first time getting a job in product management. Uh, which is which is really the hardest part because once you get a job, then other doors open. But keep it going. So the first step in the fifty ways to get a job is just getting started. Makes sense. So what I'm going to do for each of these sections is talk about two exercises that I recommend that are in the book, and then list out some of the other ones. The way the book is structured is you have these different sections and there's different uh, exercises that you can do. So I, I recommend people read through the book and highlight which exercises resonate with them and that they, they think that they're going to benefit from. You don't need to do all 50. I do not recommend you do all 50. You'll be just, you know, prolonging your job search, but there's going to be ones that help fill in the gaps and help you fill out your picture of what you want to do and how to go about getting that. So the first one, and this is one that I recommend everybody do, it's map your career your uh, career path. So I think it's critical that people look backwards to help inform what they want to do going forwards. So what you do on this is it I when I did it, I had a sheet of paper and I drew a line down the middle. Everything above the line was positive, everything below the line was negative. And it kind of was a timeline of my career. And I just kind of dotted along that timeline, experiences, milestone projects, people that affected me in positive and negative ways. And, uh, and then I did some color coding to kind of know how I was feeling at different moments. And what I found out was, oh, you know what? 
you know, I was in this, I was probably in that too long, or, you know what, working with a mentor like that, or having a manager like that was really good, or doing this types of projects really, you know, really inspired me. So use that past experience and to help inform what you want to do forward. Because honestly, like, if you think back to uh, college, college was a long time for me, but I do remember there were some classes. And even when I went to uh, school for programming and things like that, some of the best classes I took were the ones where I'm like, well, I'm never doing that shit again, ever again. So, you know, I knew right away Photoshop was not for me, as you will clearly see in my lack of any sort of uh, artistic or design skills in this uh, presentation. So that's one exercise that I think everyone should do. Another one, and it's the whole basis of the, the Launchpad Job Club, Product Job Club, is find a fun employment buddy. Uh, like I said, this isn't a fun thing, but if you find someone else in a similar situation and you make that commitment to each other, and then you use the book as a, uh, a framework and, uh, you know, that, that sort of bonding, that sort of a group and a commitment, you know, it's going to help you through to, to, you know, your ultimate goal of getting that job. Um, it's a lot easier just to, when it's just yourself, just to say, screw it. I'm going to sleep in and watch Netflix today. Or I'm like, I'm going to go do this instead. But if you're out there, you're making a commitment and you're making it to someone else and they're doing and reciprocating, you're, bo you're both going to push each other much farther. Kind of like, you know, working out at the gym. I like to go to the classes because if I, it was just up to me, it wouldn't work out. Um, other exercises for getting started. Uh, scheduling a vacation buffer. Like we are all burnt out. We're all sick of being on Zoom. Uh, the workloads have been kind of crazy. So decompressing is always good because looking for a job is a, a lot of effort. Making sure that you're financially, you understand what your runway is and where you, know, you need to kind of make certain trade-offs. And then updating your LinkedIn as uh, your future self is, is kind of like a, a cool uh, exercise. Um, all right. One of the things that I'm going to recommend is uh, if you have questions, please jump in. Uh, please do ask, stop me, or else I'm going to be a runaway train and we're going to plow through this whole presentation, except for the parts where uh, we're going to do breakout sessions. So please do stop me and ask questions, okay? All right. Your, your, your journey has started. You've got, you, you, you're using the, the past to inform the future. You found somebody, you're, you're, you're kind of really taking uh, your, your job uh, search seriously. What's the next step? Finding your purpose. And this along with networking is just absolutely, absolutely critical. This is the step people skip over. And it's just, and that's probably the biggest mistake that I see in job searches. So what are some of the exercises the, the book recommends uh, so that you understand what you love, what you bring to the table, and what is the right fit for you? Got to go out and talk to people. Uh, it's like product managers. Like we realize that we need to get out of the building and talk to our customers and understand what's going out there. We don't learn anything by staying in. Same thing with looking for a job. You need to go out and do informational interviews to find out you know, what that person does for their job. What is it like at, at, at their company? Um, and you can find people, it's easier than ever on LinkedIn and at meetup groups and through your network to find people that have a similar career trajectory uh, and that one that you want to follow. So the book uh, has great questions that you can ask during uh, those uh, interviews. Uh Oh, so Walter asks, why do you recommend downloading your bank statement? So the, the, that is really just to make sure that you're uh, on sound financial footing, you know how much time you have, because you know if you have a long runway, you can be a little bit more picky about like, you know, what jobs you're willing to take. If you have a short runway and you know, you're having financial pressures, you need to uh, understand, okay, I may have to make some compromises in terms of what is ultimately I want to, to do. The financial pressure is very, very real when searching for a job. Uh, and so getting a handle on that and you know, kind of checking that box gives you a little bit of peace of mind and be like, okay, 
this is the runway I have. This is the time. This is uh, what I have to work with. So it's really just you know, addressing uh, financial security. Um, next is describing your, gene, your dream job. And it, it isn't what it sounds like. So this exercise, you go through and you're like, what is everything that you want in your life? You want to have a healthy relationship uh, with your family and your friends. You want to be in good health. You want to uh, have time for your hobbies and you know whatever it may be. And then you need to think about like, what is the path that you wanna walk? Some people are like, I, you know, like their career ambitions, like this is what I wanna do. And, you know, you know, in terms of how it impacts the rest of your life, you know, maybe it doesn't, uh, it's not as important. I, so just last night I was meeting with uh, someone I was mentoring and they, they're really passionate about social, uh, social change, but they also, also want to make a lot of money. And that's where the third part, uh, the bullet comes in is, how does the path you want to walk in your life? How do you want people to remember you and talk about you when they're, when they're giving your eulogy? How does that match up with what you want in your life? Where are the trade-offs that you're willing to make? And what is that sweet spot? So, you know, this is it's going to be different for everybody. I know what it is for me. And I, I, I feel really fortunate that I've been able to hit that sweet spot. But uh, you need to figure out the dream job that kind of hits those different points. Other exercises in uh, finding your purpose, find your center of gravity. This is the hard exercise. That one's hard. That uh, basically challenges you to come down to two things that matter most to you, like pick two adjectives uh, and say, all right, and then you use that as kind of like an anchoring effect. And you can kind of prioritize against those two things. It's kind of like a light pole, like or a, a lighthouse. Does this, am I on track? You know, do, do I know where I am? Because I can go back to that center of gravity and know if I'm uh, being true to myself. Um, also write fiction about yourself and go on a solo trip. So go on a solo trip might sound awesome to some people, might sound awful. I will say uh, I had some of the best epiphanies for what I wanted out of my life and out of my career when going on solo trips. So when I lived in DC and my career was floundering at best, I had a very, really unremarkable and unimpressive uh, first half of my career. But you know, some of the things that really got me on track was when I went out and did solo trips in the Shenandoah Valley and just camped by myself and hiked by myself. And I realized like, I don't love this. And I want to, I really would want this and that. And it just, I, I left the woods with some clarity. So I don't know, maybe go, go into the woods, read Walden, come out uh, illuminated or uh, enlightened. Um, all right. Oh, it's activity time. How many people do we have? We got 29 people. Right now, I have uh, six groups of four. That's That works for me. So what we're going to do when we break out, so we're going to split into groups, four, five, whatever. You like Just go around the room quickly and describe your, your dream job. What are three things that you're looking for? Uh, and try to be as specific as you can. Uh, and... So I want everyone to participate. Uh, you know, uh, we, we have another exercise that we're gonna we're gonna do. So if you don't participate in this one, you have to participate. All right, welcome back, everybody. Um, let me start sharing again. Um, all right. Great. I hope I hope that was uh, helpful and people were able to kind of share uh, some of the things that they're uh, aspiring for. So along the journey, you're going to go through these different steps and there's going to be two areas where you're going to wander into which aren't so fun. First area is you're just overwhelmed. It's something that happens to all of us, but uh, in the book, Dev really shows some great ways to kind of work your way through that thicket and get back on track. So this is this this one is just general life advice. 
And when you're feeling over, overwhelmed, certain things uh, help writing them down. Actually, like I hate pen and paper. I want to type everything out. I want it to be stored digitally so I can search on it. But when I'm stressed, I will write it out and, and, and I will put it away. You know, so I do that. That's one thing where, especially before I go to bed, if I, my mind is racing, I will write things down, set it, set it aside. So I have actually a notebook kind of over in my little work, work area. The other thing is, and I'm going to sound like your moms or something, but it's like, get sleep, eat a healthy meal, get some exercise in, and then treat yourself to something you love. So if you do all four of those things for a week straight, I promise you, you'll feel, you'll be feeling a little bit better and you'll be feeling a less, less overwhelmed. I actually, you know, I, I had, you know, like anything, you have moments in your career where you're way stressed and you know, you're, you're, you're less stressed. And in doing this, I actually, this just became my, um, just my normal pattern. I go to bed so early. It's just a running joke with my friends. Like I turn 50 uh, very soon and they're, they're joking. They're just going to get me a hyperbolic train chamber because that's my favorite thing to do is just sleep. So, you know, it's like, it's going to help you as you age, Dan, and you get to do what you love most. So eating, sleeping, try and eat healthy. Not always great at that. Love sugar, but I do uh, notice the impact when I do it. Exercise. And then just doing something, something you have to look forward to, whether it's just game night with friends, whether it's a favorite TV show, whether it's, you know, going for a hike in the green belt or going to the dog park with your dog. Uh, just make sure that you kind of treat yourself right. The other thing that you can do when you're feeling overwhelmed, again, not specific to the job search, but just life in general, is there things that you can change in your daily routine? So really think about what you do and what you want to add in. How do you want to feel? And think about that. And does your daily routine help you feel that way? If not, what are some small changes that you can do? I say atomic changes because it isn't like, that's it. I'm new. Like uh, I see people like the gym, like gold's gym right now is packed. Everyone's got their new year's resolution. They're going in there and then it falls. And then they, they set these high goals and goals are great, but atomic changes in your habits are better. They're more lasting. They're more impactful. So yes, don't think about, you know, I want to do X, Y, and Z. Think about like, I want to be the type of person that goes for a 20 minute walk every morning. So kind of like a little bit of a shift. So what are those atomic changes? And don't just set the goals, but think about, I want to be the type of person that does these things. Um, other ways that he recommends when you're feeling uh, overwhelmed, make changes to your living space. Uh, one of them is just sit quietly in a room for 45 minutes. Some people that sounds like torture, some people that sounds probably like, that sounds pretty awesome. Uh, I'm kind of somewhere in the middle. I like to do maybe a little bit of meditation and breathing, but for like five, maybe 10 minutes. Uh, if I'm gonna sit quietly in a room for 45 minutes, that means I'm asleep. Uh, and I'm probably not even that quiet because I do snore. Uh, and then the next thing is renegotiate five commitments. You know, if you're feeling overwhelmed, it's time to, you know, kick things off the bus, you know, that you're just not going to do and just be like, uh, and it helps you feel less overwhelmed. Um, <laughs> John's asking what the early bird specials are, uh, Luby's. I do, like, I literally had dinner at 4.30 last night. <laughs> um, so let's, well, did I, did I skip ahead already? Two, two, two. All right. Now, the how to deal with overwhelm, we're going to go to step three. Any part of a job search involves learning new skills. So the formula that I've come up with for landing that new job is, uh, you know, putting in the time to kind of do your due diligence in searching for a job, learning new skills, because so you, you're going to, as you go through and you're looking for jobs, you're going to be realize that the companies are asking for things that maybe you don't have experience with yet. The third element is serendipity. You can't, you know, control when companies are hiring or when you hear about a job or when you meet somebody. 
But that you, those three things together equal a new job. The first two things that you can control, doing all the things that you need to do to look for a job, building up your skills. And the more you do those first two things, the, the easier that serendipity part comes in. So how do you figure out your, uh, you know, to do this? First thing you guys, you have to do an inventory of what skills you have. So you sit down, you write out all your skills for five minutes, take a break, review that list, add in five more that you may have missed. Then go online and there will be um, things. If you just Google skill inventories, or if you look at the different skills that people, that, that people have uh, been endorsed for on LinkedIn, you can find ones that apply. And then the last thing I will say, if you list a skill, you should be able to say like, oh, I use this skill in this specific instance. So don't just load things up because, you know, one way that you can battle against the applicant tracking systems is by doing something like we have below. So this is something that I put together for uh, a, like one of my product resumes. So I put my product skills, my soft skills and different tools that I've used. And this really is a very succinct way to make sure that you're matching the keywords that ATS system, you know, the applicant tracking systems are looking for. Uh, but if you ask any of these, I could go and talk about them. So you know, I can tell you about how I used Looker or you know, how I'm a continuous learner or how I do capacity planning or what, how I've used jobs to be done. Any of those, you know, because if you put it on there, you have to be ready to, to speak to it. So the next, after you have your list, you then want to figure out like, all right, where do I need to grow? Where do I want to grow? Where am I uh, interested in? So you, um, you make a list of 15 things that you want to learn. Uh, and then you also go and you th think about what are the skills that I, my just ahead mentor has? What's a just ahead mentor? We're going to get there in a little bit, but it's, you could probably guess what it is. And then you prioritize that and you make an action plan. It's easier than ever to get ramped up on skills, especially if they're like, for me, like digital skills. You have Coursera, LinkedIn, Udemy, uh, you know, so many companies, Google, you can do the Google Academies, you Google Project Management. Uh, there's so many resources out there. Many of them are very, very affordable. Um, and it allows you, you know, maybe, and even if you haven't had a chance to practice those skills in the work arena and like at, on actual projects, it shows that you have the curiosity and the desire to learn. And that growth mindset is what companies look for. If you go in and be like, yeah, I always wanted to learn Google Analytics. I'm going to do that someday. I'm going to be like, the hell is, what are you waiting for? If you want to learn it, go learn it, you know? So there you go. I will try not to go off on, on, uh, on too many rants, but um, uh, I will. So let's keep going. The next step. Oh, I'm sorry, I almost skipped over this. Other ways that you can help research or help uh, build up your list of skills, go on a research trip, do a company brief, learn outside of school, kind of th some of the things I was just uh, mentioning. And there's a section on taking better notes. Step four, get out there and network. So I didn't even bother to narrow it down. I just put it in two giant buckets. I didn't even pick two because this is so critical. So ones that I recommend that you do, like that you really, really should do if you're going to maximize your networking, list people you admire, help other people because that will come back and help you. I can't tell you how many times that has helped me and you see it. And so you should always be doing that. Reconnect with five mentors, or it could just be people that you've worked with that you've admired. Don't necessarily be like an official mentor. Email people you don't know, make a company list, and then start going through it and setting up informational interviews. And then get out there and attend some events. You guys are doing it already. So like this one, you can check off you only have to do attend three because you are in networking and uh, talking about your drawn dream job with people already. So you're already ahead of the game. Um, 
So moving on, additional networking exercises. You can map a network, uh, create a course pack, uh, you know, practice different ways of introducing yourself, which is really important. And I'm gonna to touch upon this later on. Uh, we're gonna talk about the Lego bricks of ex uh, your experience and how you want to build those Lego bricks to tell the story of your career path. So if you're gonna go for a customer success role, you're going to introduce yourself one way. If you're going for a role as an account manager, you're gonna do things a little bit differently. And then find your future boss. Who's, who's someone that you admire that, or like, you know, the type of person that you would wanna work for. But overall, the general you know, thing I wanna convey from this area, networking is key. It's just absolutely key. Because it helps you learn. It helps you understand what skills you need what skills uh, you don't have and that are out there. It helps you understand the, the particular industry, the vernacular of it, this, this talking of it. Um, and because, I, so like last night I met with someone I was mentoring and we went through his resume and I just, I, I reworded all of his experience. Um, it's everything from uh, volunteering at churches to setting up his own um uh, a teaching studio for, for music. And we put everything in terms of what it, what, how will we talk about the, what he did in product management terms? And he was saying, basically, he was describing the same at work, but just in a way that resonated with people who are product managers or are looking to hire product managers. Um, so networking also helps you figure out, you know, who are the people that you need to connect with? Who are the companies that are hiring and what companies values, culture, mission really uh, resonate with you. So another not fun part of uh, the roller coaster uh, is, so uh, John uh, or James asked, what do you mean by map a network? Well, it's in the book. So rather than tell you, I'm going to say, everyone go out, buy that book or go to 50 ways to, uh, to find a job or to get a job.com and you can kind of see what that uh, the exercise is. Uh, so you're on the, you know, you're, you're doing the networking, but invariably, probably multiple times, you're gonna feel stuck. So what do you do when you're feeling stuck? Well, one proactive thing that you can do to really, you know, so you're not spinning your wheels is just send a looking for a job to five uh, close friends. And I post it in here, just the basic framework of what that uh, email will look like. So you're going to send it to people that you consider friends, but also connector friends that you respect professionally. What I mean about connectors, well, they're the people that are happy to make introductions, the people that seem to like, there's like two degrees of them, you know, around and their name comes up. It's just someone that probably has a good network. Send it to them and they're probably going to be willing to, to kind of help you out. Um, you know, here's the thing, but you can add in, um, uh, you know, other details. And if you get the book, which I highly recommend, they have great questions that you can ask during the meeting when, uh, you know, you know, if you do kind of meet with someone and they're asking you like what you're looking for and things like that. So you, you know, good ways for you to uh, help them help you. All right, I'm going to stop and take a little uh, sip of Sprite, caffeine-free. Uh, yes, caffeine-free and zero sugar. It's not the best drink. Probably I should have a glass of water, but uh, I'm going to go with this. Is there any questions uh, out there uh, that people have? In fact, I'm going to force you guys to ask me a question. Someone's going to have to come off mute, ask me a question, uh, or else we're just going to have a long, awkward silence. <laughs> Shannon, I see you coming off mute. It can't be you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, actually, it's not for me. It's for Curtis. Uh, okay. He's asking if, if the 50 Ways book is similar to what color is my parachute. Nothing like it, in my opinion. I don't think so either. I, yeah, because, I, Lauren, you I, go ahead. Give your take on it. So, the, the you know... The great thing and the tough thing about 50 ways is everything is hard. And you know, every exercise is a is a real challenge. But yeah. the reality is 
is that if you lift a one pound weight, you probably aren't going to get stronger, you know, and uh, or if you're just doing the same thing you've always done, then you're probably going to be in the same place. And so, um, and it's, um, you know, the re you know, if you think back, if you look back on your career and you, chances are most of the jobs that you got, especially jobs that you liked, you got through a connection and not through an ad or a job board or whatever. And that's why it's so great that the, you know, like it's step 42 or something like that is go look at a job board. And, um, you know, I've been doing, like I've been stuck on that first task for a while myself uh, just because, you know, it's like, I want to put everything on there and, you know, anyway, so I highly recommend the book. Um, the website's great. You know, basically all the content that's in the book is on the website. So, um, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. It, we just, I find the book, the difference is the book is, it's all actions that you can take. It's all specific direct takeaways and things that you can do right away. I think, you know, what colors my parachute is helpful because it helps you kind of do that self-reflection of what your strengths are. And uh, you can learn a little bit about yourself uh, and maybe it can augment the finding your purpose section, but the book is just, it's concise and it gives you specifics. So that's, that's what I think is, is the difference. And um, the other thing I'll say, like, so Lauren mentioned the, 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 the website, there is differences between it. Uh, and, but you know, not that much. So if you just want to use the website, you're free to do that. If you want to kind of grab the book and mark it up and do all that, you know, you know, whatever is, uh, works for you. And Dan, this is Curtis, if I could chime in. So in comparison, cause somebody, um, gave me that book. I have it. I've, um, finished, I think a third of it, which is really just an introduction. It sounds very much kind of like this framework that you're describing. I'm just trying to figure out, um, should I continue to pursue reading, the parachute book or do you think that it's more worthwhile for me to move into um the 50 ways book in that process um i'm always i always say probably both i would you know i would say get the book look at it and i think that you'll 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 able be able to tell i just think that go, go to the website and yeah look at, that's a good look advice. at a few other of the you know, of the exercises and look at how it's organized because the whole, the book is like, again, the, the last section is actually the job hunting part, you know, and everything else is figuring out you and so on part. And, you know, it's like, yeah. So where, where it's like, which applying for jobs. Okay. So it's the seventh out of nine, you know, and, uh, and if you spend all your time in seven, you're just going to like, you know, send a hundred resumes out and hit, get crickets. So uh, Dan, I have a question. Mm -hmm. How did you use the book in your job hunt for this great job you've got at HEB? So the way I used it, honestly, the, the biggest thing for me I just as naturally am already doing uh, the, the networking. And I also like, I do strength, fight, like I did strength finders. My thing is learner. So I was kind of already learning my skills. I really struggled in this section because I, you know, you get into this point in your career, you're like, well, my next job, I have to go and do this. I was a senior director. Uh, my last two jobs, I was a senior director and I was a vice president. And I didn't love it. I didn't love, I didn't want to be in a meeting room with other vice presidents and directors. I wanted to be in a room with engineers and product managers, but I still wanted a say in the strategy. I still wanted to be able to help leadership understand what the, the teams are trying to accomplish, the frustrations of product managers. So what I was able to do is realize like, well, there is a middle ground. And it's, it's this principal product manager role. And I had to really kind of talk to HEB about like, this is what I can bring to the table. Like they did not advertise for that. But what I did, and, and there are exercises in here, 
uh, like one of them is write your own job description. It's essentially what I did. So uh, let's see if it's this one. Uh, no, it's not. It's probably this one. I mean, to be honest, writing your own job description should be relatively easy. Mm -hmm. Take all the things mm -hmm. you love doing in your resume and all the things you really want to do that you've seen in job descriptions for that next great job and kind yeah. of put them together and weed them out. Yeah. Yeah. And, and for me, people are like, really, you're, you, 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 I had two offers to be a director. They're like, you're just going to go. Aren't you afraid that people are going to think about you being a principal product manager as a step backwards? And I'm like, I don't give a shit what people think. I want to be happy and I want to love what I'm doing. And uh, so I do. And, and so um, this is, that's really how I use the book. I definitely did some things like in terms of like networking and, you know, applying for jobs. But for me, the biggest one was finding my purpose. That that's what helped me the most. Thanks. Yep. Um, all right. I realize we only have seven minutes left. Time flies when you're, uh, talking nonstop. Even when you talk as fast as you do. <laughs> I got to run. I'll catch I... up with you soon. I've got to go do physical therapy. All right. Take care. You too. I actually one time was not selected to present at a conference and their feedback was talks too fast. <laughs> and I was like, that's fair. No, they, they nailed it. It's true. I mean, I still think I would have done a good job at the conference, but anyway, uh, other ways that you can kind of get out of that rut and, and from feeling stuck make your own finish line. Uh, they have a section for uh, record yourself in a stressful situation. That's an interesting exercise you should read about. Win over someone that cast you aside and then you know what to do when you need to switch plans. Step five. Now it's really step seven because you, you're before you even get to this, you're going to feel overwhelmed. And you're going to feel stuck. But we'll say it's step five. You got to organize your job search. You got to you have to come at it with a plan. Uh, and because, uh, you know, there's a lot of great quotes out there, uh, planning plans are worthless, but planning is invaluable, uh, or essential. And everyone's got a plan until you get punched in the face. You still need a plan. And like, you need those other exercises when you get punched in the face and you get knocked down, you got to get back up. So you, you want to have a spreadsheet. I'm sure that there's a lot of templates out there. I'm sure probably Launchpad Job Club has some that you can point you to. Um, but, you know, the, the main takeaway on this is do not skip to this step. Don't do it. I will, I will, I will, I will literally be mad at you. I may not even know you, but if you tell me that that is what you've done, I will be upset. Uh, so don't do it to yourself. You're only going to set yourself back. The next thing is uh, you want to send out an email. So you're going to send it to the company that you're looking for. And this is the way that you're going to connect with them. You're going to give specific evidence of like a real skill that you have that they need. You're also going to show them that you're aligned in your aligned with their mission. That's not like their values. That's not their, the culture or the industry, it's the mission of the company. I will guarantee you, you will always have the advantage. If you are seen as more mission aligned than other candidates, you're gonna have a leg up. And then the other thing that he recommends is explaining how you can make a deeper impact by working with their company. So for me, I, you know, it was like, if I, if I go to HEB, I can work with the other uh, people there and together we can make this impact. And this is what I'm going to bring to the table and what I'm going to help with it. And then finally, seems pretty obvious, request an opportunity to talk. So um, more exercises, go to a job board and then leave. Okay. Talk to a recruiter. This section is really good because it gives you specific things that you want to ask a recruiter uh, and how to deal with them if you choose to kind of go that route. Find what job title. This is another thing that I realized that I, you know, I, I need to stop looking at director and VP roles and just, I just want to be a principal product manager in a specific type. And then there's a, a section on getting a side hustle. We don't have time for the second activity, but this is one that you're going to do when you find your fun employment buddy. 
You're going to pull up each other's LinkedIn profile. You're going to show it to each other and get feedback. So there you go. You've already got homework. You're welcome. Hey, Dan. Step six. Yes. We have a question from Sherry, and it is, okay. um, will you expand on winning someone over who cast you aside? Uh, wait, let me find. Oh, sure. So this is an area, this is where, um, you know, at different points in, in, in your life, you're going to have people that, you know, it didn't work out with, you know, that the company or you weren't, uh, you know, particularly pair well with them at a job. I'll give you an example. I left a company, uh, not in the best terms, uh, when I was a vice president, I just, I, I didn't get along with the president. I didn't agree. Like his approach was contrary to a lot of the product management fundamentals. It was a lot, it was too much micromanaging. It was too reactionary and it wasn't data-driven enough. And we just butted heads. Five years later, I went back and we, I, I connected with him and we had beers and I let him know about all of the things that that role and that job and that experience, how it helped me and how I grew from it. So that's one way in you do that. And then what ends up happening is it's, you, know, you turn a uh, debit into a credit, so to speak. You kind of show that, you know what? This is someone who is humble, hungry and smart and is willing to kind of look honestly uh, on the work that they did where they were uh, wrong and to appreciate maybe uh, some of the qualities and things that people who they may have butted heads with, uh, the, the things that, that they were trying to help impart upon us. So I, I, again, I would the, the book explains it better than I can, but I can give you the one example from my career where I went back and I did that. And it was not only, it was not only cathartic, but it was really good for both of us because I, I felt so much better letting him know. I didn't want him to think that I didn't like him and that I thought poorly of him, uh, but I wanted him to know the opportunities he gave me put me in the position where I am today. Even if it wasn't, the, it ended up not being the right fit, I still benefited from working with him. Um, all right, so this we're going to go over because this is so key you have to you have to own your story you have to be able to tell a story and a career arc that when you're talking to an interviewer it makes all the sense in the world that the next logical step is the job that you're there to discuss so what you do and how do you do that is you build a list of 10 Lego brick experiences. So, you know, what are the key things that have happened in your career that have been pretty monumental? And you want to write out each one and you got to have these stories at the ready. And then what you do, depending on the job, is you do different combination of those Lego bricks. So for me, if I'm going to a job where like, say I'm going to go, uh, UT is like, hey, Dan, we're going to teach people product management and we want you to teach that class. And we want you to come on as a professor. Uh, I would have to go through and think about all the ways that my instruction and my be being an instructor, coach, and mentor would make me a great fit for that job. Or if I saw the job and, you know, th that combination of Lego bricks is going to be different than if I decided like, oh my gosh, I want to go to be vice president at this company, or I want to be a senior product manager at this company. I would put together the combination in different ways. So it's really figuring out what are those success stories that you want to tell? How can you make sure that they're part of an overall cohesive story about your career? And you know how you got to go in practice and be able to, on the fly, tell that story in a compelling way. And then finally, after you've practiced it, you want to make sure that it's in your resume. Uh, uh, you know, those stories are reflected in your resume so that they have some context if they read your resume beforehand.
This one is just so important. You absolutely have to own your story. I touched upon this earlier about proving your mission aligned. How do you do that? Well, the, uh, Deb gives great ways to do that. So you can listen or talk to relevant uh, people in the field or leaders from the company. You can go on a research trip. You know, if you are interested in getting into e-commerce, head down and go tour the Amazon uh, warehouse facility and see how they, they've done their automated uh, fulfillment. That would be a really great way and something that you can share. Um, you can share, I've seen a lot of people have success sharing and uh, their knowledge in LinkedIn posts and kind of establishing themselves as an expert in a specific field or someone who is like, hey, I'm not an expert, but I'm going on this learning journey and I'm gonna share uh, what I learned along the way. You can also find nonprofits that are addressing what you're doing. So like in HEB, one way that maybe if you would like want to come for work at HEB Digital, is you can go volunteer at the food bank, understand what are the challenges families have putting together budgets for their groceries? What are some, how are they impacted by some of the, the price changes uh, for um, on certain groceries? There invariably is going to be some nonprofit related to the space that you're in, and you can go and volunteer with them. And if you're just not volunteering in general, it's it's just good for your soul and you, sh you should do it. And then finally, you can start a group of like-minded people. So I wanted to be more with more product people. So I started the product league and you don't have to have thousands of people in your group. You can just have like a group of 10 people that get together. I one time started a group called the dive bar group. I love going to a dive bar and drinking cheap beer. It's fun. It's something that, you know, brings me happiness. So we started a dive bar club and we went around and found the biggest dive bars that we could in Austin. Great time. So um, that probably won't land you a job, but it, it can be fun. So more interviewing exercise. You have to decide when you work for free. Um, write your own job description. I kind of just mentioned that a little while ago change uh, your decision-making process. And then I love this one. And I have seen this work for people get jobs. Start work without telling the company. I had a guy who was fascinated with a um, in, an online uh, company and he started kind of just doing product management things for them, reached out to an informational interview with uh, one of their leaders, showed some of the things they put together, they hired him. That, that this is a really, really cool way of doing that. It does kind of remind me if, you know, if you've ever watched that episode of Costanza or uh, Seinfeld where Costanza quit and then he just shows up on Monday, like nothing happened. Uh, yeah, that that's not what we're talking about here. Um, all right, there is one last step. It's your new job. And I, and I can guarantee you, if you go through these steps, you will have, you will, you have a much, much better chance of ending up at this step than if you don't. Um, again, Lauren said it, these aren't easy exercises, but they do help you and they will kind of get you, keep you that traction. And if you do them with others and hold each other accountable, you're going to get to this step. I, I, uh, I promise you that. Thank you.